We will be kicking this off with Morgan Hurt, who's the Director of Credentialing at ATD. Morgan's going to be talking about capability and competency profiles and do we really look for learning gods um, and what might look different in the future post COVID. So I will hand it off to Morgan. I'll stop sharing my screen. Great, thanks Tina. Uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for coming to hear a little bit about uh, competency and capability profiles. This is a little opportunity for self-reflection. Uh, L&D professionals spend so much time really helping develop others that here's an opportunity to step back and have a little reflection on how we might develop ourselves. Uh, and I've got some tools to show you that can help you do that. And it's really an opportunity to look at taking the time to expand your personal toolkit. So I'm going to try to make the technology work and go ahead and share my screen. Oops. While you're doing that, Morgan, I just wanted to invite everyone that if you have questions or conversation throughout, please use the table chat for the fourth table. Um, you can also use the general chat, but that will be kind of everyone that are in the sessions across all the tables. So if you wanted to use the table chat for the fourth table, that'll stick with just this group. Um, feel free to post any questions there and I'll moderate the Q&A at the end. Thank you, Morgan. Great, thanks. So again, this is really an opportunity for some self-reflection for L&D professionals, specifically talent development. Um, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about the talent development capability model. And this, of course, is a framework that really sets the common standard for what talent development professionals need to know and do in order to be effective and successful. And this is a research-based model that was released by ATD earlier this year. And ATD has been in the competency model business for about 41 years, uh, and that certainly has evolved over time. And this particular iteration was exciting for us because it was the opportunity to really put a stake in the ground around talent development specifically. The previous competency model study had been done in 2013 when we were still ASTD. So this was really the opportunity to take a look at what sort of are the edges of talent development and where does it um, nest up against other job roles, <clears throat> but also to take a look at what the strategic position talent development has within an organization, and then what knowledge and skills do people need in order to really be able to help drive an organization's success. So again, uh, what I'm going to show you is based on research from over 3,000 professionals from around the world um, at various stages of their career uh, in all different size organizations and all different roles. So we really had a robust set of data to uh, develop this framework. And what's exciting about it is that it really is flexible and customizable. People can look at it at any stage of their career in any different job role and really have the opportunity to explore how expanding their particular toolkit of knowledge and skills um, might help them uh, be more effective or grow and expand into that next new role. So what we released in January, again, is called the Talent Development Capability Model. Uh, it's a framework that's divided into three uh, domains of practice, uh, looking at those uh, personal capabilities, which are essentially interpersonal skills. Uh, and you know, these are the kinds of things that most professionals need to be successful. But these are those that are particularly important for talent development professionals. Um, those kinds of things were included in previous capability or competency models, but we they sort of were considered foundational or enabling skills. And so I think a lot of people didn't pay a lot of attention to them. We sort of all assume that if we're working professionals that we must have some of those tools in our toolkit, uh, but our research really showed um, the importance of actually being able to leverage those skills and to grow and develop them for ourselves. Then we have um, professional capabilities, and this is really that uh, 
very technical and very specific toolkit for talent development professionals where you find those typical L&D functions such as instructional design, uh, training, delivery, and those things. But then looking at the new strategic role talent development can play is that impacting organizational capability domain where again we really find some of those strategic items such as talent strategy and management and organization development and culture uh, but also some of those critical business skills that business acumen uh, the rise of data and analytics and how talent development needs to be able to report on those and have those at our fingertips and of course change management which um, we all know over the past couple of uh, months has been critically important so again this is uh, it's three domains of practice that contain 23 different capability areas and there's actually 188 knowledge and skill statements inside of those 23 capabilities and I was listening in earlier this morning on a conversation and in the chat people were talking about a lot of job postings including capabilities that included you know everything including the kitchen sink and so how were people supposed to be expected to be able to do all of those things so what i want to say really straight from the top is while this framework represents knowledge and skills that we think talent development professionals in general should be aware of we don't expect people to be a master of everything um, but to really um, take a look at some of the adjacent knowledge and skills to really again make their toolkit more effective so 188 knowledge and skill statements sounds like a lot as does 23 capabilities but the intention is not to have people you know be jack of all trades and master of none but to really look at honing their skill set um, those things that that they lend themselves best to and then looking around and seeing what are some of the things that might help them supercharge um, that toolkit so let's just quick look firstly in that personal capability bucket uh, again this is where we have those interpersonal skills that you would find anywhere uh, communication collaboration and leadership playing well with others uh, lifelong learning which of course is the passion for most of you but that also helps to contribute to building a learning culture within our own organizations um, cultural aware cultural awareness and inclusion again focusing uh, not just on global diversity but all kinds of diversity we find in the workplace and how we can address those and be sensitive to them uh, in the course of our work of course, the importance of emotional intelligence, uh, those kinds of things. Uh, compliance and ethical behavior, which you know doesn't sound very sexy, and in this case is not about developing compliance training, but is really about making sure that uh, we as professionals are adhering to um, the laws, regulations, customs, ethics that are involved in the actual work that we execute. And you know what's kind of what was interesting about our research was that as important as a lot of the specific talent development skill set uh, is that in many cases talent development professionals felt that a lot of these personal skills are actually more important than some of those technical l d skills uh, if we can't leverage those personal capabilities and play well with others and be able to uh, communicate our outcomes or be able to translate needs then that's not going to make us as effective and creating solutions for the organization so we also i think see that reflected in other research done um, in 2019 ibm released its uh, skills gap report uh, that talked about how great organizations had done in upskilling uh, their professionals in things like uh, technology over the past several years but that the next frontier for skill development was going to be around a lot of these personal skills. So communication and again, collaboration and teamwork being key. And those things are also reflected in the LinkedIn learning workplace learning uh, reports for both 2019 and 2020, that again, these are key skill areas for uh, organizations to look to develop. And so of course, likewise, they're included here for talent development and L&D professionals. Um, moving on to then that professional capability area, which is really where we find those technical skills around um, L&D, so instructional design and training, delivery, and facilitation. Um, but we also see the introduction now of a whole content area around learning sciences, and that's certainly in recognition of the explosion of 
research and science that's happened over the past several years about uh, the science of learning and how the brain works and those things. But it's been added here so that all types of L&D professionals will recognize that importance and try to learn and understand more about it so that they can actually use that in their work to make it more effective. Uh, evaluating impact uh, in previous ATD models, this used to be um, measuring learning impact or evaluating learning. Um, and here we've, by calling it evaluating impact, we've also expanded some of the knowledge and skill set there to include not just did the learning seem effective, Do, did people like the course um, or the interaction, but really what is that downstream impact on the organization's ability to be successful. And so some, for some of us, that requires developing a new set of tools to be able to evaluate those uh, interactions and interventions, and then also to be able to communicate those results to the C-suite and tell them what they need to hear, which isn't always what we'd like to report on. Uh, so expanding that toolkit as well. Technology application too here has been expanded. I used to be really focused on learning technology. Um, and while that certainly is still a core component of this, it's also how do we leverage technology? Uh, how do we integrate it into people's work or integrate it into other things, other systems that we have? And then how do we evaluate technology and figure out how best to use it in our roles? Uh, career and leadership development, um, back in the personal capabilities, that particular area was on our own personal um, leadership skills and things like that. Here it's specifically around developing those skills for others. So not too much uh, surprising in this particular domain, again, this sort of that, that core talent development uh, content. But then over into perhaps the, the newest uh, domain, and that's the impacting organizational capability. And really, again, looking at the strategic value of the L&D function uh, and, again, pulling in that business insight. What are those key metrics that uh, organizations are looking uh, to improve, uh, whether it's, it's sales numbers, whether it's efficiency, uh, those kinds of things, uh, those skills become important consulting and business partnering and in that it's not just independent consultants but how L&D professionals have to be partners across the organization uh, with different business units again with leadership to really understand the organization's needs which in this day and age seem to be changing and moving rapidly. Uh, again new things data and analytics again the development of that particular set of tools in your toolkit uh, and be able to leverage that so that you know what works and what doesn't. Uh, and then future readiness. And uh, just to talk for a minute, when we developed this particular iteration, um, as I said, we the previous models had, were often very tactical and looked at how do you do the work of L&D. And for this iteration, we actually spent a lot of time uh, sort of elevating the level of those knowledge and skill statements to really focus on the what and the why of what L&D professionals need to know and be able to do, uh, and a little bit less on the how, uh, because that, as we know, is rapidly changing, and it's hard to keep up with that. So by focusing more on the what and the why, it makes us more nimble in being able to provide content um, to the public in terms of how to carry out specific tasks, but you know, allows us to make sure that people are still aware of the full scope of what might be useful to know and be able to do. And so future readiness is included as a whole capability area because we recognize that talent development professionals are uniquely positioned to help an organization be ready for the future. And so by making sure that talent development professionals have the skill set to be able to try to be a little bit of fortune tellers and, and see into the future, uh, but to help organizations with environmental scanning and understanding what things are going to impact what the organization does or needs to, to learn to do. Things like uh, fostering innovation, which can help uh, improve performance in the workplace, and also being able, again, to evaluate emerging technology and how we can use it to leverage impact for the organization.
So there's a lots of things within the model and that framework to explore uh, and to get familiar with and to sort of step outside that comfort zone. Uh, we all, we sometimes as L&D professionals, we need to remember that stepping outside that comfort zone is, is perhaps what helps us learn best uh, instead of just sticking to those things that we feel like we're comfortable with and we know, uh, but taking the opportunity to look outside and, you know, what new knowledge or skill can I develop that can actually uh, impact my work positively. So we've built this framework and sort of how then can you as an individual use it? it it's not just an academic exercise in this sense. And so we've tried to design some tools for you to really be able to explore the model itself. And we've also built in a self-assessment feature so that you can use the capability model to sort of take a look at where your knowledge and skills lie across this big framework. And then what are the specific areas that you might want to focus on for improvement? And again, just talking back to that, that um, concept that this, this framework is um, both broad and deep. And so the expectation is not that everyone become an expert at everything, but you really put the pieces of the model together that either fit your current job role or fit that job role that you'd like to have so that you know what knowledge and skills to develop for that, that next move. Um, and if you're currently seeking a job, it's the opportunity, again, to sort of step outside that comfort zone and look at, you know, what are some of the things that I could develop that might be a differentiator for me uh, in that next interview or, or on my resume? So again, we haven't designed this for everyone to be able to be 100% proficient with everything, uh, but to really spend some time reflecting so that we can move the needle on our own knowledge and skills. So again, we built those tools to help you kind of take your own temperature uh, as to where you stand, and then to help you identify goals or objectives um, to move that yourself forward, whether that's looking to that next job or whether it's to solve a particular challenge that you have today. And so what skills could you develop to help you solve that challenge? And then uh, we've created some tools to actually help you create a personalized learning plan that will help you close that gaps. That gap. Um, normally, I work largely with our uh, ATD certificates, those people who are pursuing or already have the uh, Associate Professional in Talent Development or the Certified Professional in Talent Development, um, formerly known as the CPLP. Uh, and so I hear a lot um, from candidates about professional development. And I have the armchair observation that L&D professionals have a hard time carving out that time and reflection for themselves to create their own learning plans because obviously your focus is to develop others. And so we've hopefully created some tools for you to be able to do that. And I'm actually going to jump out and give you a peek at those tools. This is where I get to try to make sure that I know how to work the software. Uh, Oops. Let's see. Ha. <laughs> okay. So um, here's the way that you can access the capability model and actually dive in and take a look at what knowledge and skills are included in them. But I'm also going to take uh, and show you where that self-assessment is. So you can actually come to td.org forward slash capability model uh, and uh, come to this big blue button, um, access the model. I'm going to take you right into our interactive capability model site. And from here, you really have the opportunity to uh, explore the model at a high level. This is all interactive. So, you know, you can really click around and, um, you know, take a look, explore different areas. And then when you're ready to dive in, uh, let's dive into technology application. Uh, you will come into the model. Um, as you can see, we have this blue framework. Uh, developing professional capability is highlighted over here to show you which domain you're in. And we have at the top of the page um, a definition of what uh, the scope of that particular capability is, technology application. And then underneath that, we have all of the knowledge and skill statements associated with that particular domain. So I picked a big one. I, <laughs> I picked one with 50 knowledge and skill statements. Uh, but again, this is really just an opportunity for you to take a look at what might be included here. 
and think about which of these things are part of your current job role or has, has been part of what you've been responsible for and what are some new things that you might be able to develop. And again, uh, over here on the left, you can see all of the capability areas that fall into the professional capability domain. Um, and if you'd like, you can just pop over to another one and you're going to get its definition and those knowledge and skill statements. So again, this is really designed for you to just sort of be able to click around and take a look, use it as a reference. Um, but we have also, uh, again, designed the self-assessment for you to really give you a barometer of where you are. So you'll notice this middle tab here says self-assessment. Um, before I click on that, I just want to be clear, anyone can access this. Um, this is not an ATD membership benefit. It's open to anyone in the profession who can come in and start taking a look. If you want to perform the self-assessment, you also do not need to be an ATD member. You do, however, need to have um, a login for the td.org website, and that's largely so that we can save your progress on that self-assessment and you can come back and visit it. So again, um, not a membership benefit, but really available to anyone who would like to participate. So we're going to go over to the self-assessment, and uh, you'll see a couple of new things here on the screen. At the very top, um, we have this uh, percentage score. Mine currently is 31%. And that's my overall proficiency score in the professional capability domain, according to my self-assessment uh, and my own review of my proficiency levels. And then over on the right-hand side of the screen, you will see 35%. And that's my capability proficiency score for this entire capability, so for learning sciences. Um, and like we saw the knowledge statements previously, um, you'll see here, this is really a self-assessment. So it, it's not an assessment in the sense of test questions. Um, we have toyed with that, but you really need about 10 test questions to really assess someone's knowledge on a particular concept. And so that would be close to 2,000 test questions. And we didn't think that too many people were going to sit through that. So for now, again, we have this um, self-reflection uh, about your proficiency level. We have a rating key over here that you can use, um, but you can go through um, and do a self-assessment. And as you will see, as I change my ratings, my proficiency score uh, in that upper corner changes. So uh, this is designed for you to be able to come back and change your scores as you complete some professional development or other activities so that again, you can sort of keep uh, pace, sort of move the needle on your own proficiency and growth and development. The final tab is this My Report tab, which is where there's a roll up of your overall capability model score uh, and then broken down into each of the domains. And again, it's it's really just an opportunity for you to spend some time doing some reflection and to help you take a moment to figure out how to prioritize your own learning and development needs. So we're going to come back to this um, in a little minute, but I wanted to uh, share some other things with you first. Okay, back to my slides. Hey, I did pretty good there. Okay, so um, we have had this self-assessment out since we launched the model um, in January of this year. Um, and so we have over almost 6,000 um, individuals who've completed the self-assessment. And so I thought it would be interesting to sort of take a look at what some of the top capabilities are. So no surprise, lifelong learning. Uh, the highest proficiency rated capability um, across the entire model. And since that is what most of you are so passionate about, it's sort of no surprise there. Also training and delivery and facilitation, highly uh, ranked, again, largely because uh, those people that are coming to ATD largely fall into this bucket. So again, makes sense uh, that people feel strongly about their proficiency in that area. Communication, about 50%, again, emotional intelligence and decision making, highly rated, as well as project management. And I think what's interesting to look at here is that four of these five areas do fall into that personal capability domain area, um, and then one into the professional capabilities. And so, again, talking about the importance of those uh, interpersonal skills 
I don't like to call them soft skills if I can help it because they they're darn hard to practice sometimes. Uh, but uh, again, plenty of room across the model for other improvements. But then, interestingly, same 6,000, nearly 6,000 people taking a look at what are the bottom five capabilities. So this is an area for people to actually look at using to differentiate themselves from other candidates if you can increase the tools in your toolkit here. So bottom of the barrel, data and analytics. So not a big surprise. Um, tough for a lot of people, but again, it is an area that if we develop can be extremely useful uh, to our organization and again to demonstrating um, the strategic ability for talent development and learning to really provide leverage for an organization. Technology application, so interesting, um, but again, we've expanded that uh, capability, the knowledge and skills in that area. Uh, so it may be that people feel really comfortable with learning platforms, um, but not so comfortable with integrating it or leveraging other types of technology. Change management. This one surprised me uh, because I sort of look around and I feel that uh, people in the L&D function are often responsible with helping people uh, adjust to change. Uh, it's so interesting that this is an area people don't feel very confident in their skills. Talent strategy and management. Uh, while many of us are responsible for managing learning programs, again, this now introduces some of those key strategic concepts for an organization and really trying to give uh, L&D a seat at the table and making sure that organizations um, are aware of what capabilities and skills they have uh, on board, uh, what skills they need to do the work, and looking at being able to shift those people around, um, upskill some, uh, shift others over, and then if need be, then hiring for those skill gaps. And so actually the self-assessment is a great way uh, within an organization to take a look at the skills that you have. If you use the capability model to design job families or job descriptions, sort of in that utopian uh, function that you'd like to have, have your team members go through that self-assessment and sort of plug them into those functions that the department actually needs and then look at where your gaps are and be able to see who's ready to be upskilled, um, who might be in the wrong position but could be better filling some other function and then identifying where your gaps are and do you need to hire in for those specific gaps or is there some other resource internally that you can use to fill those. And then rounding out that bottom five, knowledge management. Um, never a super popular area, but um, kind of of key importance for the organization. So I think we all know the value of change management. If you, again, if we were to develop those knowledge and skills, how could that impact the organization? Um, Pre-COVID, we know that a lot of change initiatives fail, and that's largely because they launch without uh, executive support. Um, but we also know that senior executives feel like there's change fatigue within their organization. Um, I don't think uh, there's any such thing now as a new normal. I think the new normal is uh, constant change uh, and being able to uh, adjust to that change. I want to try to eliminate the word pivot from my vocabulary, um, but here it is on the slide. Um, but really um, developing change management skills and being able to make those available to the organization are going to be key because, you know, over the past several months, teams and whole organizations have had to change uh, and develop skills they didn't even know they needed to have, never mind the skills they actually need to do their job. Uh, and so how can you as an L&D or talent development professional help your organization through that change um, and, you know, be more effective? Same thing with talent strategy and management, being prepared to help the organization see the impact uh, that's coming. Um, I don't think any of us saw what was happening coming, um, but how can we keep our eyes forward? That's that future readiness piece of the capability model uh, so that we can help an organization um, really be ready for the future. You know, in the, in the past, organizations succeeded because they had the better product or because they had the greater market share or market visibility. And I really think 
uh, learning agility and learning acceleration is going to be the key to that next successful organization. So here's an opportunity for you to really be part of that success. So how on earth do you keep expanding your set of tools and growing your skills? Um, so we've seen um, that self-assessment. Um, and so now, you know, most organizations have some type of personalized learning. So how do you develop a personalized learning plan for yourself? Uh, again, that, that model of capabilities can seem overwhelming. Uh, so using that self-assessment can help you identify where your biggest gaps are, whether those are gaps for a challenge you're facing today or a gap between you and, and that next job role where you think you can be effective. Uh, so creating that personalized plan, um, not a one size fits all. Um, and the talent development capability model can do that. You're actually going to be the first group of people to see a brand new feature that we rolled out in the capability model last night. So let's see if I can get you over there. Whoops. I'm going to learn how to do this. Okay, there we go. So here we are back on the My Report page uh, in the capability model. And down here, um, I've already selected a learning plan. And so this is where, uh, if you were coming to the model the first time, you'd be given the invitation to select a learning plan. So we're going to go over here. And ATD has created a tool within the, the capability model that will allow you to, again, um, create a learning plan for yourself. There's a number of different ways that you can create that plan. You can sort of choose your own adventure uh, and create a self-guided plan where you sort of look at the capabilities. Um, it, it will take your self-assessment and show you the capabilities where you need improvement and you can select those for yourself. If you'd like to pursue uh, one of our certification programs, you can choose to develop a learning plan against what you need to know in order to be successful on those exams, and it will compare your self-assessment to those things. Or you can choose sort of a, a curated development path that ATD has created that looked at all the competencies and skills that were necessary, say, for a trainer in this case. Um, and it will walk you through your gaps and your self-assessment between that and between that ultimate trainer path. So again, the idea isn't that you're going to become 100% proficient in all of those capabilities, but again, that you're going to try to move your personal needle. Um, so once you choose a learning plan, you can go over and choose learning resources. And so here um, you'll see the capabilities where I have a gap. Um, there are three knowledge or skill statements in learning sciences in which I have a gap. So I can see what that gap is. And then I can actually look at um, resources, in this case, they're ATD resources that can help you fill that knowledge and skill gap. And you just sort of click this little box to add it to your learning plan. So there's all kinds of things here. Um, uh, articles, there's uh, magazine articles, webcasts, podcasts, things like that. Um, books, courses, um, things that are free, things that are free to members, things like courses that that obviously require enrollment, um, but we're at least trying to provide you with the opportunity to um, build out that plan. Ooh, at the very bottom, you're also able to, here's the learning plan, add things that aren't ATD specific, but um, are things that you'd like to add. Maybe you saw a LinkedIn learning course, or maybe you wanted to add this conference to your learning plan. You can do that here so that you can hold yourself accountable. I'll be quiet now for a while. Are there questions? Oh, it looks like you're. You did. Yeah. I didn't say the word. I didn't say it. <laughs> you. There we go. So, nope. There you there go. We go. Now you okay. got it. <laughs> <laughs> My button was stuck. Of course, the age old, um, you're muted story. Um, thank you so much, Morgan. This was awesome. I had no idea that this new feature was available. We've got a lot of great comments from the participants about this. I cannot wait to go out there and explore. So thank you for sharing. We did get a couple of questions. Um, we have one around burnout. So 
how do we sustain people, prevent burnout? It's just a key thing to consider, especially during this time. Yeah, I do think that's tricky. Um, I think we're we're all a little burned out, but I think for me, um, having the opportunity to sort of um, learn a little bit, even, you know, not become proficient necessarily, but learn a little bit about something that I'm not familiar with in my job space, and there's plenty of that, even having to learn this platform <laughs> um, is sort of like, okay, mm -hmm. you kind of take yourself out of your, your everyday space and kind of get a little bit of that excitement back, you know, instead of that burnout. So maybe in a quiet moment, you can sort of t explore and identify that one small piece, you know, not all 188, but that one small thing that's like, hey, I always wanted to know more about that sort of how can I go do that, whether it's even if it's just starting with reading a couple articles or blogs and getting yourself more familiar that might try to help re-excite you again. That's a great point. And you mentioned the change management piece. Maybe that's a, a great place for all of us to start. <laughs> right. 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 Um, and then we got to prevent stress for ourselves if we it, can kind of, you know, create some of little more tools in our toolkit that helps reduce our own stress. So. Exactly. And just like Kimo shared earlier on the whole change curve, we're all going through our own change and then we have to help other people navigate it. So <laughs> it's just so personal. Uh, we had one question come in from Chad on companies place a lot of emphasis on real world experience. Can you recommend a way to develop a capability when there is not the on the job training opportunity to apply it? That is a great question, Chad. Um, and I will sort of be really self-serving here for ATD just because I happened to do another presentation not that long ago on, on this topic. Um, but I think for some, it really depends on what it is. But I think, um, and of course, with us all, largely all being remote, it becomes even trickier. But looking at something like... Um, you know, maybe you've got some people at a specialist level in a big organization who don't have the opportunity to really develop any leadership skills. Well, looking at something like your ATD chapter and getting someone involved there where they can then take on, you know, helping, as Kimo was saying, being program chair for the chapter and start to develop some of those leadership skills that maybe aren't within your organization, but are out in the community um, to help gain some confidence and, and increase those skills. And so trying to use um, conferences like this to network and to see if there are other opportunities like that where um, perhaps on, a, on that volunteer basis, you can try to explore that skill set. Absolutely. We are just on time cool. in terms of closing out this part of the track. You can <laughs> take a deep breath. This was a lot of awesome information, Morgan. Thank you so much. And it's great to see that it's a free resource. We don't have to have a paid membership to take advantage. No. That's no, so great. Please go take a look. And um, my contact information is out there. So if you have questions about it, um, feel free to let us know. I'm happy to chat with you about it further. Thank you so much. It was great, great no, to thank see you guys. today. And we will talk very soon. Thank you, Morgan. Great, thanks.